Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of the Terra Venture Podcast presented by my Morphin Megaverse Power Rangers Facebook group and welcome to my 363rd edition of the podcast. Wow, close to 370 and whatnot. Wow. So for those who didn't know, I did finally weeks ago before Linkara's History of Power Rangers on Dino Fury would about to happen soon. I actually did took some time off while not working on my fan film or any other videos for this channel to watch Power Rangers Dino Fury in its two seasons. And okay. I think I think many people are going to be anxious. What are my thoughts on the season exactly? Because I know that some of you are probably going to be wondering what are my thoughts about Power Rangers Dino Fury and how I feel about the series so far. Even though season th there is going to be a third season of Dino Fury known as Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. So before right around the Thanksgiving weekend, I took some time off to watch Power Rangers Dino Fury and get a good taste of the season. Even though I'm not regularly following the main show of Power Rangers as much anymore because I'm doing my thing and also doing other stuff in the background while this is still going on. So here are my thoughts on Dino Fury and I know you're probably wondering how I feel about the series. Dino Fury was... How do I put this bluntly? Upon watching the two seasons... I, uh, oh boy, um, man, the, there's a lot to sink in with this one. I just think Dino Fury was a mediocre to average season, as in it's probably like a, what I mean by mediocre and average, I mean like, it, it, there parts of it is good, parts of it is bad, but... To be honest though, Dino Fury to me was, it was a Power Ranger season I did not ask for. It was a season I didn't, didn't expect them to do once Beast Morphers happened. And, but yeah, there was some good things about it, but I'm not going to overly praise it like a lot of those of, you know, in King, to Kingdom Come, like the rest of the fandom has. But I know for a fact that the fan, the Power Rangers fandom you know, has overblown Dino Fury. I mean, Dino Fury, yeah, it did a lot of stuff that no other season had did before it. While I do amend them giving us our first LGBT gay, lesbian, queer Power Ranger uh, out of the Green Ranger, Izzy Garzi Garcia and all, but I just feel like Dino Fury just did so much, so little for me to care about it, you know? And maybe it's because for me, I tend to prefer Beast Morphers as Hasbro's first good season, even though Dino Fury is probably where I think in a few years from now when, when Cosmic Fury is out next year in 2023, and then when we get that stuff, what Hasbro is going to do after the 30th anniversary going forward, that um, Dino Fury is probably Power Rangers in the Hasbro era at its peak, because this is where Dino Fury, because again, like Dino Fury was where Hasbro really shone with Power Rangers because of like the character stuff, the story and everything in between and try to cl clean up mistakes they did on Beast Morphers. I mean, not that I, not that Beast Morphers was bad or anything. If you go back to my final thoughts video on Beast Morphers, I actually like Beast Morphers a whole lot more than the entire Neo Saban era, but Dino Fury just felt for me a downgrade to Beast Morphers. I mean, to each their own. I know everybody's going to say, no, Dino Fury is the best Power Ranger show of all time and, and, and stuff like that. And uh, probably way better than any of them older seasons that we had, like RPM and Time Force and SPD. But Dino Fury, here's another thing. Now, the thing is, I'm just just like... You know, there are some familiarity elements of Dino Fury that they, you know, that Dino Fury did from other seasons and like, oh, Dino Fury wants to do better than that. But really, I think I shouldn't compare Dino Fury to all those older seasons that I like, like, of course, Lost Galaxy. OK, and in fact, you know, Dino Fury is not my favorite Power Ranger season. I like some things from it, but it's just not my favorite season. 
And um, there's some characters I liked, rangers, villains, whatever. But I've just never been a big fan of this season. I'm sorry. And I just feel like it, it feels like a really overblown season, um, like I said earlier. But I know people are going to lob at me in the comment section. Because if you remember like how the fandom, you know, for those who have been in the fandom for as long as anybody, remember how most Power Ranger fans overblown RPM? This is how it feels right now with Dino Fury. At least I'd rather take RPM over Dino Fury because RPM, I can now tolerate why fans loved RPM because it was a way more mature season. Yeah, we had our little bits of comic relief with like characters like Ziggy and Jim and Gemma and all that in RPM. But I think maybe I shouldn't compare Dino Fury to RPM too much because the thing is what RPM is that that was what that was, you know, because Disney wanted to call it quits with Power Rangers and they wanted to, you know, once they've done that season, they was like, kill it. But when Hasbro did Power Rangers, this is Hasbro's first fully produced season since Beast Morphers was half Saban, half Hasbro. Once Hasbro, even though Saban, when when Power Rangers was sold off to Hasbro, some of Saban's people was involved with Beast Morphers. So they can teach Has the people over at Hasbro how to do Power Rangers since they just now got their hands on the property since three, four and a half years ago. So once they've done D Beast Morphers, okay, Beast Morphers, this was their little, you know, tr you know, this was the step of transitioning from Neo Saban to Hasbro. But yeah, but even though Beast Morphers is like up there with Wild Force, like how we went from Saban to Disney when when Wild Force was produced, it, it still had holdovers of Saban's original era, but it was still a Disney season nevertheless. But Dino Fury is kind of like up there with Ninja Storm, where it was like like if Ninja Storm was Disney's first fully produced Power Ranger season, Dino Fury is Hasbro's first fully produced Power Ranger season. And I feel like as I go through this uh, video and talking about Dino Fury, I know I'm probably going to likely compare Dino Fury to all the seasons that I've seen better from it and, and probably worse from it. But it feels like Dino Fury can do no better or no worse than, let's say, well, Ninja Steel, and I, I feel like, well, again, you know, while we're still in the Hasbro era of with the show, there's still some holdovers of Neo Saban in Dino Fury, but even though I say that the comic relief with J, J, Jane and Jay Borg was a slight improvement, what I'll get to those two later. But... I just feel as though that Dino Fury was trying too hard for me to care. It was trying too hard for me to act like this is one of my favorite seasons of Rangers now, but I never said it was. It was just one of those seasons of Power Rangers that just came out of the blue, and I, I honestly just didn't really care for it when it was announced, even though I was shocked, first off. Now, let's talk about its pre-production. If you remember back two and a half years ago, during the Big V, when Beast Morphers was on hiatus for the summer, for season, Beast Morphers Season 2, they said something about Dino Fury going to be like the last season of Power Rangers Hasbro would do for the show, for like the main show, because they wanted, they want to do Power Rangers in a way that, you know, once they would do Dino Fury, they would be like, like done with the adapting of Sentai because yeah a lot of the majority of well like I, I kind of wanted to say before or I probably said before earlier that a lot of the majority of Super Sentai shows that we've had for um, adapted in the Power Rangers and especially ever since Gokaiger and Super Mega Force that most of the majority of a lot of the Sentai shows following Gokaiger throughout the last decade have not been all that great. We've had some good seasons d after Gokaiger, and we had some bad seasons after Gokaiger. But we know that for a fact over here with Power Rangers, Megaforce, Super Megaforce is still widely hate considered one of the worst seasons of all time in the Power Rangers fandom. But even nevertheless, Dino Charge happened, but they start. it was the first to skip a Sentai because, they because Saban thought, you know, 
the Sentai before, which we already did a death via Hasbro, you know, Go Buster for Beast Morphers would not work. So that's why they went with Kyuryuger, which is, you know, Power Rangers Dino Charge here. They did it again after Dino Charge when they skipped Tokuger and they went and decided to do again the Ninja into Power Rangers Ninja Steel. Nevertheless, we did adapt a few elements of Tokuger, or probably just one element from Tokuger, that being Void Queen's costume, aka Madame Noir, Noir from uh, Tokuger. Um, and we already adapted the entire Beast, you know, Go Buster Sentai for Beast Morphers. We did that. So now what remains when we get season three of Dino Fury, since Cosmic Fury is going to imply it's different. So it feels like as though Dino Fury is once again another do-over of Megaforce. Where, okay, season one or season two or both is, okay, you're adapting Rue Soldier for a one whole series. And then the second series, you're adapting something else, um, but still keeping the same cast. Okay, fair enough, but I'm still not, I'm not fond of what uh, Cosmic Fury has in store because even though I do not own the rights to use Q Ranger and its Zord Mecha and stuff as much as I like those Zords, but combining the the Q Ranger Mech with Ru Soldier Sentai base suits, like again, like again, it worked for Mighty Morphin. See, here's the problem what I also have against um, Dino Fury before I get back to the pre-production stuff. Is that while I mind and amend Dino Fury for trying to be a very, a very Mighty Morphin esque season, but they were really going really at it, trying to make you know adamant and trying to make it like Mighty Morphin, because with the 30th anniversary fast approaching or slowly approaching, that's one of the reasons why they wanted to do um, the season of Power Rangers to be hearkening back to Mighty Morphin since the 30th anniversary is coming up and it made sense why but but again the, the initial plan was they were not going to do a third season but just as soon as it was announced for, you know especially with the Power Morphicon announcement with the cast reveal they decided no let's bring back everybody from Dino Fury to be Cosmic Fury Rangers and also what Sentai we're adapting Uchu Sentai Q Ranger and I've discussed about that before but I honestly am not looking forward to uh, Cosmic Fury because, I mean, look, I know I don't own Q Ranger or this Mecha, even though I was intending to, uh, for my third and final initial fan film of Power Rangers Lost Galaxy for its Infinite Frontier installment to, you, to be a hybrid of Ginga Man with Q Ranger for my fan film thing. But no, that's fan fiction. What Power Rangers is officially doing with the main show that's what they're doing with Q Ranger mixing what they had from Dino Fury with Q Ranger stuff. And, you know, you went from dinosaurs to space like it doesn't make sense. It's no different than, OK, comparing Dino Fury with older seasons again here. And I know I'm going to get lobbed after this in the comments about it. You know how it's so funny back in the Zordon era. It made sense with the Mighty Morphin era. Where the Rangers had the dinosaur suits from Zoo Ranger. And after the Zoo Ranger footage was exhausted, by the next two seasons, they would just only do the Zord footage uh, of Dai Ranger and Kaku Ranger for seasons two and three. And that worked. But the only reason they did that was because they wanted to pertain the Mighty Morphin trademark of the Zoo Ranger suits for the Mighty Morphin team. Well, although Tommy would get the, Di the Kiba Ranger suit from Dai Ranger, which the Thunder Zords are from. So they decided to like hybrid the White Ranger, for which is from a totally different Sentai related to Zoo Ranger, unrelated to Zoo Ranger, and make that the you know part of the theme of Mighty Morphin and what the aesthetics was for MMPR. But at least that worked. So how is it possible that for Dino Fury to take, you know, you did your Rue Soldier adaptation for two seasons? But, of course, an extra third season where it's going to be all original footage of the Rangers in the Zord co cockpit. They get new suits, but the Zords are from Q Ranger, which is space themed and all that stuff. And think, man, I think Hasbro is going to make Cosmic Fury some epic space season. But I know as a nostalgia tart of 90s Power Rangers lore, I'll be like... Dino Cosmic Fury will never top in space and lost galaxy. And I know once again, I got realize as great as in space and lost galaxy was to me growing up. And for any of those who watched it, mainly for those who watched in space, 
But got to realize that, well, Cosmic Fury is only going to be 10 episodes, just like the Alien Ranger saga. Another comparison piece to another piece of 90s Power Rangers paraphernalia, where Cosmic Fury is going to likely be like Alien Rangers. Yeah, it'll have some condensed sophisticated, some condensed storyline, but because, again, the rule is, you know, since Power Rangers is on Netflix now... Um, Cosmic Fury will be just like, you know, it'll be the first season since the Alien Rangers miniseries to have 10 episodes. Well, I know as bummed out as I am personally looking back on Alien Rangers, the Alien Rangers saga from season three, I kind of do wish Alien Rangers kind of did had an extra 15 or 20 episodes. Um, even if you run out of Cocker Ranger footage, but of course you can still extend their storyline through Zeo and still have the Equation Rangers team up with the Zeo Rangers a little bit. A little bit further, but again, given what 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 they did during Zio, but since there is no more Kaku Ranger footage they could do, do at the time. But you know, but I, I'm getting ahead of myself with that. But I just feel as though that Dino Fury just feels like a really overblown uh, season. The plan was this should have been a two year and done season, but then they announced a third season. And, and like I said before, I'm not feeling it. I'm just like, why? But again, they can do what they want. And I know that a lot of fans like the Dino Fury cast, probably one of the best cast, the quote unquote best cast of Rangers we've had so far. But I honestly, you know, I mean, I like a few of the, the cast of the show, like Hunter, Hunter Dino, who plays um, Deno. I'm sorry, I'm getting her name wrong, who played Amelia, the Pink Ranger. And I do like, you know, um... Tessa Rao, who played Izzy, the green, uh, you know, the green Dino Ranger, but I, I honestly can care less about everything else about Dino Fury, uh, so to speak. But I do want to talk about some things. I well, before I get to the, you know, to the negatives of the show, there is only a few positives I like to bring up about the show. Um, but I'm really not sure how you guys are going to feel about my opinion about the series. I'm not going to do an overall overview of Dino Fury and go through, like, talk about it for three hours, talking about what went on in episodes one through 22 of season one and episodes one to 22 of season two, because that's just too long to talk about. But I do have to talk about some of the things that they got away with and some things that they that, that caught me off guard upon my watching. But even though what made me not want to watch Dino Fury, well, it's been months after it ended in September because the remaining half of season two had uh, premiered on Netflix in September. So it gave them enough time for me to, OK, give me enough time to watch the series at my own pace and get my overall thoughts of it. And how do I feel about the series in general? But anyway, about that pre-production stuff. Because again, you know, again, Dino Fury was intended to be this bookend the Power Rangers as Hasbro intended. Because based on what the Illuminati had reported before, uh, you know, the series started. And then once after the series and then following the, 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 the reveal of Cosmic Fury at this year's Power Morphicon, they said about how... Uh, Cosmic Fury is going to be a continuation of Dino Fury, first time since the Zordon era, where we would have a season of Rangers that's c continuous, continuing off from one season to another, uh, completely with the same people. Even though during the Zordon era, during Mighty Morphin through in space, that most of everybody from Mighty Morphin didn't stay on for the rest of Turbo. And can you imagine if Tommy and them actually went up in the space and were the in space Rangers instead of Andros and TJ and Cassie and them? I mean, imagine that. But realizing that if they had done that, I mean, but then Power Rangers would run on fumes and that's why we ended up getting what we got during the second half of Turbo and throughout all of in space. But at least that worked. Or like Mighty Morphin, we went from Mighty Morphin and we transitioned from Mighty Morphin to Zeo perfectly and you know without any uh uh contusions to why you had to uh transition from that because yeah the mighty morphin stuff was getting a little stale by the third season and it made sense why you had to change up the suits and everything and start continuing on practicing on doing what super sentai does instead of having power rangers con constantly still aping off mmpr for those suits even if you give the mighty morphin rangers you know new zords but they still have the same suits and everything but it would get tiresome and boring if you did. 
So it made sense to mat have ranger suits that match the footage that you're adapting from that Sentai and just rename the show along the way, even if you change the, ca the cast. Okay, so one of the few things I'll, I'll give Dino Fury this is that uh, for the positives of the show is that I did like Void Queen and Void Knight straight up from the bat, off the bat as villains. Um, even though Void Knight... You know, here's the thing. Void Knight and Void Queen, and I know I'm going to go into some spoiler territory for those who haven't watched it. Um, what's so funny about this is that how Dino Fury, you know, as as much as it was over, it was spoiled by fans. You know, spoil. You know, I was well. That's my dumbass fault for getting spoiled before I even watched the series. That's my dumbass fault. But I realized. You know, everybody's on the internet. They're always looking stuff up and posting on there. And if I see the spoiler, I'm like, okay, then I don't want to watch it. But again, I got to realize that it's there, but it's just, you know, because I understand nothing else is a surprise anymore. Okay. I'm do I'm, even though I'm both old school and trying to get into the new school stuff of ways of thinking, but like realizing that I just, just nothing can stay a surprise anymore. But anyway, but Void Void Knight was well. He was basically like if Korag, you know, had done something like this during Mystic Force. Even though there were shades of Korag in this guy, but at least unlike Korag, Void Knight didn't boast about honor and stuff for the Master and all of that like he did. Um, not even uh, his Sentai counterpart of Woolzard and Maji Ranger. Void Knight was all about wanting to collect the Sporex because um, just to also revive his uh, his wife Centora, who would become the Void Queen, and and it's so it's so you know the more I, the more I thought about it and as you go through the series, Void Knight and Void Queen, and spoiler alert, only especially when we get to the damn end of the series, they had human forms before, but they were also Rafconian. Um, yes, but that's the spoiler. And never really thought that, you know, all this time, I thought that um, Void Knight and Void Queen were just humanoid villains that would also take up costumed, monstrous or so forms, and they would never be the same kin as the red and gold Dino Fury Rangers of Aeon and, and Zato, and with Amelia as the last minute Refconium revealed, which really fucked me up. And, and basically, I personally liked Void Knight when he was evil during the first season, but he did pete it out in the second season, even, well, when he was supposed to be a good guy, but then he's being brainwashed to be the Void King um, by his wife Centura, the Void Queen, and, you know, King and Queen, of course, you know, and, and basically, well, well, and I also did like that while I did amend both those two being villains for the entire series of Dino Fury. I say season one was the Void Void Knight uh, focus season for a villain. Season two was the Void Queen focus for a villain. Because um, season two was Void Queen all over, you know, and basically, even the more I rewatch Void Queen... Now, as much as I always always wanted to see something, some semblance or reverence of the Tokyuger Sentai within Power Rangers, that was a surprise that they actually managed to get Madame Noir's costume from uh, to Tokyuger uh, for Power Rangers, even if it's from a Sentai unrelated from Rue Soldier, which Dino Fury adapted its stuff from. And it sucks that, you know, um, they never really... You know, I, I know that Rue Soldier... They never really had uh, a counterpart, a female boss villain counterpart um, of Void Queen for, uh, you know, from, from Dino Fury. So they had to think out the box, which, yeah, it made sense. They thought out the box adapting um, a villain that was from, you know, the train theme Sentai. We still will never, ever, ever, ever get on Power Rangers. And just accept that we had adapted um, a villain from that um that pantheon of villains um from that sentai to fit with Rue soldier set of villains which again hybriding like what mighty morphin did like mighty morphin and even megaforce like you know mighty morphin first where they adapted zoo ranger the zoo ranger villains and only adapted to kaku ranger villains since lord zed was only made for power rangers 
Whereas Mega Force and Super Mega Force, you just take the Go Sager villains and Go Kaiger. But again, you know, given the com you know the the, the come up, it's with um, Go Sager and Go Kaiger's villains not really working together because again, there was no way how because again, Saban didn't think about it. They didn't know how to get um, high. If if Mega Force is supposed to be a hybrid of you know Go Sager and Go Kaiger, then why couldn't they combine the two villain forces? from those two respective Sentais that they were part of one re reincarnate re United Alliance of Evil. But again, that was during Megaforce. But Dino Fury, it made sense why they decided to, um, you know, make the villains be a hybrid. Like, you just have everybody, every villain suit from Rue Soldier, but then you have one Tokudra villain. Ninja Steel did it too. Um, with Cosmo Royale, who was based on the Baron Nero uh, villain from Tokyo. So yeah, so this is the second season of Power Rangers following Ninja Steel, where we have some elements of Tokyo already present. Because again, Tokyo, if they had adapted that season, you know, again, it, it wouldn't still wouldn't sell. And that's why we have to just only take some elements from it, just like what we already did with Mighty Morphin and several seasons that took some elements of Die Ranger because Die Ranger was a very difficult sent Sentai to do, so they decided just only take a few, you know, you know, take and grab some elements that they'll probably take and not adapt everything from Die Ranger, since, you know, Die Ranger in itself, while as good as that Sentai was, it was just too story heavy and character heavy uh, for uh, Power Rangers to care about. That's why, you know, MMPR Season 2 did what it did, and, and there you go. But I really amend the fact that, um, again, Dino Fury, they made Void Queen, um, you know, who she was. I did like that, um, especially by the tail end of the season, Void Queen started coming off a bit like Queen Banshira in a way. And also, I did have some semblances of Lightspeed Rescue in the season with the villains, where Void, you know, like Void King... No, not Void King. Well, Void Knight, Void King, Tarek, basically. They just, you know... Basically, Tarek is up there with Blaze from Beast Morphers. He had one suit for Season 1 that was his main form, and in Season 2, he has a new form. But I actually prefer how Blaze did it better in Beast Morphers, where he had um, that crimson, but uh, that Dark Buster suit, and then what whatever his Robo Blaze form is from, from Go Buster. Oh, uh, Enter. Sorry. And combine that for um, the two seasons. But again, I just feel like Beast. I feel like Dino Fury was trying to do everything in his power to out, you know, up, you know, up tar. You know, um, wait a minute. Trying to up the up the ante from Beast Morphers and also make a lot of uh, corrections from that season. Even though Beast Morphers wasn't a broken season, and what isn't fit, what if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know that sort of thing. But they really probably wanted to outdo Beast Morphers in terms of what they did there and try to make it somewhat better. And that was the problem. And why the heck do you want to do something like that? Like, Beast Morphers was, I mean, Beast Morphers was just a fine series. Y'all didn't need to, you know, change some stuff from it, you know? I mean, y'all didn't need to do that. I liked it just the way it was. I mean, but even though, yeah, Dino Fury wants to do way better than it. And that's probably where I got really, uh, you know, a little deep down frustrated during my binge watch of the series. And I, I really felt like Dino Fury was trying to outdo Beast Morphers and try to make it way better than it. And, and I, I get that maybe Dino Fury was doing some echo responses to Beast Morphers to me and giving my, my complaints about that season, especially when we get to the comic release stuff later. But although the villains were slightly strong but the only two villains that were the strongest of the season until they were reformed later on at the very end was well again void knight slash void king and void queen Tarek and centora but what really messed me up though is that um again relating to the pink ranger again how like Tarek and centora were really amelia's parents i mean of all the times you know amelia was you know spending most of her time as the pink ranger you know working at buzz blast i'll discuss buzz blast uh soon and how 
she is revealed to be the same species as Zadon Aeon's um, tri uh, alien race of Rafcon. Raf and I, I honestly just felt like uh, I wish Amelia was never uh, a Rafconian. I wish they didn't. I mean, again, that that reveal. And I get that they were I get what they were trying to build up as I was watching the two seasons. And like all the time, Amelia was talking about looking for her parents and trying to figure out where her parents are, her mom and dad. But then when we get to the final episode, we learned that Centora and Tarek raised our future Pink Ranger here. And I, I honestly just like, I, I don't get why they did it. And I get they, you know, once again, trying to do another comparison to something like In Space again. Like, you know, with KO35, with, you know, Team KO35 with Andro, Zane, and Caron, uh there. But even though at least, uh, you know, Amelia was not like some astronomer type villain that she would grow up to be and then later a Power Ranger. But again, I shouldn't compare Amelia to Caron because like, I like Caron. But comparing her to Amelia is wrong, and I, I know that, you know, again, it's like Dino Fury was trying to outdo those seasons that I like so much, but I realized I shouldn't compare it to it too much, because it's already bad enough, like, when you compare, like, like I said about RPM earlier, like, if you compare RPM to, like, In Space, and I know I did my little comparison, In Space comparison with RPM, where, you know, in the past, where why I did not like the latter half of RPM because of course, yeah, Judd Lynn had the pick up on where Eddie Gazillion left off and just did his own thing with uh, RPM when Gazillion would, f when Eddie Gazillion was fired. And that's why Lynn decided to judge Chip Lynn decided to um, basically rehash something that we already were familiar with back in, uh, in space because in space was intended to be the end of Power Rangers much like RPM is so it seemed like when Simon Bennett and them did Dino Fury they thought okay let's take those elements that worked in those seasons in the past and try to see if we can make it better for this generation because Dino Fury well again the rumors from us the fandom based on what the Illuminati had us all alarmed and freaking out about back two years and a half ago about Dino Fury being the last season because oh Hasbro said uh, but, but, but again fuck the Illuminati because they should have never said about oh after Dino Fury they're going to stop adapting Sentai and Power Rangers will start doing completely their own shit and maybe it may be true but maybe it's false but whatever but um but I, I just don't understand why did they decide to make the Pink Ranger the same race as Zato and Aeon and, and yeah, but then finding out that Tarek and Centora are also Rathconian too but then also they were trapped in that bunk they were also put in that bunker in area 62 yeah nice reference to the real life area 52 in, in the Power Rangers universe but um I just feel like then all this time then why I mean yeah they were building I, I can see why they kept it as a secret now that part I, I amend about Amelia looking for her parents was a surprise that was one thing I wasn't spoiled by when before watching the season but I just really felt like um, I just did not like that reveal of, you know, the villains being the parents of the Pink Ranger. If it had made sense, like, like, well, suppose that they did like what, what was again with Mystic Force. Again, comparing that season with this season again. You know, I, I think that's the problem with me with Dino Fury versus the previous 27 years of Power Rangers is that Dino Fury is trying to do better than all the seasons that we had before because they want to make Dino Fury like this is going to be the last Power Rangers ever made, like the last series ever made. And I get that that's what Hasbro somewhat was intending, but then they decided to give it a third season, which we'll know coming up. Because I was just not really feeling... I just wasn't feeling it, you know? And I, I never really really cared for why they did it um because it just made sense why they did what they did but all in all i just feel like you know that's what they intended fine but they really didn't really need to do you know what they did you know tying uh Tarek and centora as amelia's parents that's just um out of left that was very out of left field with me and it kind of did mess me up too to a degree i'm not gonna lie but it really messed me up 
and I just didn't know what to expect, you know? But although I would say Void Queen, you know, come to think of it, of course, Void Queen is no Queen Bashira or Trakina, but especially when we got to the latter, the final three, four episodes of the Endgame arc for Dino Fury. Even when I saw Void Queen, when she was turning, when she, uh, when she, uh, Evade, when she invaded Buzz Blast in the Endgame arc, and when she made a cocoon for herself, I was like, okay, now she took a cube book from Trakina's way of villainy of having a cocoon to become very powerful. Or something like with Queen Banshira. Again, but again, Void Queen is neither Trakina or Queen Banshira, but I can see where they were getting with that reference. Because again, Dino Fury, like Beast Morphers, it, was, it had all this lore of you know connecting all the lore of the previous of the last 30 years of rangers and try to cobble it all together like this is the last season of this ongoing continuity or something but as for the other villains though i mean boom tower slither and mucus well boom tower and slither were okay i mean there's not much i can say about those two so there's not really much i can care about those two but man, once I get to our other female villain, the side comic relief female villain, Mucus. Mucus is just outright disgusting. Like, it's like she she was like some like Pokemon Digimon character reject within Power Rangers. And to me, she is like one of the most disgusting female villain characters, even though when she is like being destroyed she turns into this green goo stuff like it was left over from ghostbusters or something because yeah not only that even though i'm not a ghostbusters fan but i meant some of them references like given the fact that they were talking about you know what buzz blast about the supernatural and all of that and then amelia being so fascinated with ghosts and supernatural stuff um again you can tell that they were also trying to be like ghostbusters with power rangers which for those who are fans of ghostbusters would like with the season of, of rangers and then also some pokemon like stuff with the sporex the sporex beasts gotta catch them all and all that right and the sporex beasts themselves were what they were you know and, and why they had to make them somewhat important to the over facting over arc, overarching factor to the series is, uh, you know, sake and what they were trying to do with the series. And also there aren't that many, um, sporks that they can choose from, from not from what I can recall, because there were like a whole lot of villains. I mean, I mean, not villains. There were like a whole lot of sporks beast monsters that they had for be, uh, for Dino Fury. Um, which is part of the Void family because the Void family, um, that's what it's part of. Because I would say that like Light Speed Rescue and Mystic Force, the series was had this family theme going on. And I could see why it was. I would say the season was probably more family oriented than Light Speed Rescue or Mystic Force. But I don't. I just feel dirty even praising Dino Fury for that family aspect. But really, there's something I have to realize that it's like you're trying to make it better than those two seasons with that. But it just just. You're just trying too hard. But then again, you know, I, I did amend about the, the, the different variations of the Spork Beast uh, that they had. But I'm just like, okay, well, what you going to do with that there with the, the, the beasts? And, and, and then, of course, um, throughout the course of the, season, the two seasons, the Rangers would catch some of the Spork Beasts after, being the, after the Sporks are defeated. But a lot of the time, the villains would get the sporks because they're part of their family and whatnot or whatever. But, but, but it's just, again, when we learn tying in with, um, you know, again, tying to the fact that they had, um, you know, the, you know, the Rafconi, because again, given Zato and Aeon's uh, mishaps on, you know, on that one point, that one time when they were on Rafcon, uh, they accidentally let the Sporks beast unleash, and that's why the Sporks are all over. And then they have to, and that's why they have to go get a team of Rangers uh, to, to to recruit to get the Sporks back. And you know, again, it's very convoluted because the season in itself is just frustrating for me to comprehend for me because, like, 
I just don't really care for the story of Dino Fury all that much because, like, I, I it was just a season of Power Rangers I, I, I cared less about. Even though, yeah, I minded them adapting Rue Soldier because, again, it was a more recent season because they wanted to move forward. But then they decided to go backwards again with the following same time when we get season three earlier, later this year. And I'm just like, ugh. But, again, the Sporex, again, they're kind of like Pokeballs from Pokemon and uh, when they're in their pre-evolution forms or like the digi like the ev the, the pre-digi forms for like the digimon another thing also from an older season like the time force rangers and spd rangers the dino fury rangers do not outright destroy the sporex beast once the rangers use the megazord to destroy the sporex monster of the week it just goes back to its sporex glowy form and and then the rangers or anybody from the void gang of villains would get their hands on the sporex beast at the end of each episode so okay i i, I get fair enough why they did what they did there with that aspect but i just feel like uh it's just very like pokemon gotta catch them all mentality uh with that in the season and i'm even though i'm not a fan of po like ghostbusters i'm not a fan of pokemon either but but i get the references with the the season Okay, um, okay, the other positives I'll give the season before I get to the negatives. I did, okay, for when it comes to the Rangers, there is uh, some characters I do like. Um, of the six Dino Fury Rangers, I actually like the Garcia siblings of Izzy and Javi the most because. Izzy and Javi got my attention a lot more than the other four Rangers, kind of like similar to Mike and Emily from Samurai, but Javi and Izzy were the standouts of the season, and especially Javi and, well, Izzy especially because Izzy is our first openly gay Power Ranger, her having a girlfriend, Fern, obviously, and Javi with all things considered about him and his talent for music and stuff. And, you know, Javi was um, one of my favorite Black Rangers so far. I'll give that. Um, even though he's no chase from Dino Charge, but Javi was 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 his own character. And uh, while I always love Chase from Dino Charge, Chase is the man from Dino Charge, the Black Ranger. But Javi, basically, what I did like about his character, while he had this passion for music... What I did like in the episodes when he had this uh, issue with his father, you know, finally giving finally a black ranger with daddy issues for once and not a red ranger with daddy issues because I had enough of that already. Um, and I, I amended that and even even though Javi didn't want to see eye to eye with his uh, with he and um, Izzy's father, who is the park ranger of the town that the Dino Fury Rangers are in. And I feel like, OK, well. His, you know, their father didn't want to, uh, Mr. Garcia didn't want anything, didn't want Javi doing any pursuit of music and stuff like that, and didn't understand how much, uh, you know, doesn't understand how much music meant to Javi. And when he took away his, uh, that piano, harm, harm, piano, uh, guitar, you know, the keytar, yeah, that's what it is, the keytar, because I was watching the show, the keytar, I was going to say something that was like key monica, key monica, which is basically like a combination of piano and harmonica. Uh, sort of thing. I wish there was such a hybrid of that, but um, you know, a keytar in in that one that one earlier episode from season one, and then especially once when uh, in season two or was it season one? One of them, when in one episode in season two, when um, Javi decided to join that band for that thing at Buzz Blast, while their father had this um, ceremony at the park with while Izzy was attending because Javi didn't want to meet up with his father at that ceremony because he decided to do the band they had a heated argument about it but then uh, and wanted to, and also because Javi wanted to do some music video thing in that episode which I did amend them doing with that but then later on his father started to their, their father you know basically Izzy and Javi's father started to accept Javi's passion for music which I amended him for that and also I did like how Javi was very much of a good big brother to Izzy, um, the, the brother sister dynamic between the two, and he did also he does also support uh, his sister his sister being uh, a lesbian to uh, Fern, 
because I did not. Uh, yeah. You know, again, they were being preached. You know, again, we have to start getting more LGBT characters and Power Rangers. And yeah. This is the first official LGBT Power Ranger, um, you know, which brings us to Izzy proper. Now, Izzy, I would say, you know, I wasn't going to be fond of her character at first, but she started to grow on me from the moment that, um, OK, I guess this is where they started. Um, making her officially the first ever gay power ranger and yeah it was a huge deal in the fandom i heard about it by the time of the second half of dino fury and realizing that again they wanted to start doing more representation i mean even though there was an earlier episode in season one that if we can get our first lgbt power ranger i mean they just had a side character that was izzy's uh uh friend cousin was it with down syndrome and that was a character that represents those with disabilities like ADD you know ADD ADHD autism dyslexia and you know I wish we had more characters with disabilities and Power Rangers more I mean and I feel like even when I watched Dino Fury it felt like this is the 2017 movie calling a do-over sometimes and I even said this upon my first ever binge watch of the season that Dino Fury kind of feels like a do-over of the 2017 movie in ways because, yeah, when you go back to the 2017 Power Rangers movie, yeah, we know that Trini in the 2017 movie is gay, but we never see her kissing with a girl or any of that. We just, uh, they just had the late, they just hinted about the labels of her being already gay, but we just never see her with any girls, you know, into lesbians or, or if she's bi, you know, bisexual. Um, with, uh, you know, boys and girls, you know, basically, or just mainly girls if she's really, I'm only about women, I'm only about girls, I don't want no guy, I like girls. Um, you know, kind of lesbian. Because, or, you know, and, uh, so, and Izzy was also the, probably the most athletic of the bunch, and, uh, and probably the most proactive of the Rangers. So anyway, Javi and, Javi and Izzy are two of my favorite Rangers from Dino Fury. But then there comes Amelia, which, you know, Amelia was doing, like I said earlier about with the villains, Amelia was doing good so far until that reveal at the end, uh, that Void Knight and Void King are her, are her parents the whole time. And, um, yeah, that's it about Amelia, but I, I, I just feel like, man, I, I honestly feel like they, it's like, again, why all of a sudden they reveal that she is a Rathconian, just like Tarek, Centora, Aeon, and Zato. Why? Like, why now? Why? Like, I mean, I, I just thought that she was just like an ordinary human girl who's a news reporter for Buzz Blast and who's also the Pink Ranger, and her grandfather was the only parent she had. She was like an orphan in a way. She was she was parented by her grandfather, known as Pop Pop. Well, I call her call him Ed, but the, the show decides to call him by Pop Pop because you know Pop Pop sounds kind of like a yeah, that's very childish and sounds like a, sounds some ghetto some ghetto way of any black person calling their grandfather Pop Pop, you know, in a way. But um, honestly. Yeah, but again, Amelia was doing good character wise so far, but I just honestly, um, I just felt like, man, if she wasn't Rathconia, she would have just been just like the rest of the other Rangers. And Zato and Aeon should have been the only alien Rangers of the group. Um, let's see, what's the other thing about Dino Fury? Um, I guess those are my only positives for the show, unfortunately, sadly. Now, I'm okay. 49 going on 50 minutes into the video later it's time i start talking about the the negatives of dino fury because there is like a lot of negatives i don't like about this show because, because i know a lot of people are not going to like what i'm going to say negative about dino fury but i'm going to go ahead and talk about it in the original recorded portion of this video for my dino fury final thoughts i did not bring up about you know some other aspects about the series i didn't like but i forgot about that in the recording process I forgot to mention about the Dino Fury suits um, in in the original portion of this video about the negatives of the sh of, of the show. All things considered, even though I did saw these suits as Rue Soldier for you know Rue Soldier, but they were like you know they were very reminiscent of the SPD uniforms, you know the SPD Rangers uniforms in a way, but the suits were 
like blah you know to me and like i did not like the suits um you know at all for the season of rangers i mean compared to let's say the dino dino charge and dino thunder ranger ranger designs i personally am not a big fan of the dino fury suits all that personally while it had somewhat a good color balance for most of the rangers even though the black ranger suit is probably the best of the bunch because i do like i am a sucker for all things black and gold but the other rangers though i am not a big fan of with their suits at all and the helmets well the, the helmets are supposed to evoke of that of a knight theme but dino fury wants to ignore the knight th th you know uh, aesthetic of the Rue soldier helmets and those suits because that's what that was in the Sentai but they decided to ignore that but just call it Dino Fury but honestly I just can't get into those suits personally I'm not a big fan of the, the, the suits or the helmets unfortunately because um but then again, I mean, to each their own. But if you like those suits and helmets for these Rangers, more power to you. But personally, I think Dino Charge had the better looking Dino Ranger helmets and suits for a modern day Power Ranger season, in my opinion. Even though I would say Dino, Dino Charge had the better looking Dino Ranger suits, in my opinion, for a modern PR and Sentai season. And even for something classic like Mighty Morphin and Dino Thunder. The only few, one of the few things that was very SPD-esque about the Dino Fury suits is that one arm of the suit is the, the base color of the Rangers and the other is like black or gray or silverish. But the, but I would say the, the left sleeve of each of the Rangers arm, except for the Gold Ranger, the Gold Ranger has a blue, a dark blue sleeve while the main five has a silver-ish, gray-ish sleeve and I'm not feeling it and I don't like it. And plus, I just don't like how bland the Dino Fury Ruth Soldier designs actually look anyway, as opposed to, let's say, again, Kyrie and Dino Charge, or Abba Ranger, Dino Thunder, or, of course, Zoo Ranger and Mighty Morphin. So, if I would go ahead and rank these Dino, you know, of all the Dino Ranger teams with their uniforms, I would, if I would go ahead and rank them, obviously, yes, put Mighty Morphin at number one, Dino Charge number two, Dino Thunder third, and Dino Fury last with their suits. Because honestly, Dino Fury ranks below as one of my one of my least favorite Dino Ranger suit designs ever. Also, I need to talk about the name of the season. That's another negative. Why Dino Fury? Now, before when they trademarked Q, you know, uh Rue Soldier for the season, it would have made sense if the show went with a knight theme and called it Power Rangers Dino Knights or something. But people would think, nah, Dino Knights is a bit too generic. And so they had to call it Dino Fury. Like, you know, like, at least the Fury of the Dino or some crap like that. But it just didn't, I just didn't feel nothing with this team. At least with something like Dino Thunder or Dino Charge, I can get away with that title. Now with Dino Thunder, when we had that 18, 19 years ago, that title sounded awesome. Because of course they're also adapting, you know, Abba Ranger. Since Abba Ranger, you know, when they had Dinosaur, but, but the way how it was stylized from Super Sentai with Abba Ranger, that Abba Ranger was basically Rampage, you know, Abba is kind of like, Abba is like Rampage in a way. And then Kyrioger uh, for Dino Charge. You know, Kyrioger and Dino Charge was way more energetic than, let's say, Abba Ranger. And, well, even though I haven't watched Kyrioger in a long time. But Kyrioger and Dino Charge had a much more pleasing aesthetic and also a pleasing naming of what that series was about. Even though Dino, you know, when you think about it with Dino Thunder versus Dino Fury or Dino Charge versus Dino Fury... When it comes to like Dino Thunder, it was basically, yeah, the season where Tommy returned as a teacher and then later as a returning Power Ranger with a new Ranger suit and a new Zord, well, even though the new Zord doesn't combine with the other Dino Zords, just as a carrier Zord. And then we had a, a awesome villain out of Mezagog and his cronies, you know, like Elsa and Zeltrax and the evil White Ranger clone. Um, and then Dino Thunder hearkened well with the Mighty Morphin callbacks and stuff and at least that's even though dino thunder was the legacy season 
Dino Charge was his own thing, where, okay, you had five, later six, and then four more Rangers to battle Sledge and his army, try to get all the inner gems, only to find out Dino Charge takes place in a alternate universe, alternate dimension from the main universe. So Dino Fury is... So Dino Fury is about these Rangers battling Void Knight, Void Queen, and try to, you know, get stop them from stealing the Sporex for, for what purpose? That That's just it. Because I can get away with Dino Thunder and Dino Charge with their storylines, but Dino Fury just didn't make sense to me with that story. Plus, also, again, the title of the series. I mean, there was nothing Fury about the title of the show. I wish that if they called... I mean, if they went with the title Knights... It would have been more fitting if they were to make it more like the Sentai of of their their counterpart of Rue Soldier. If you if should have made it more of a night theme series instead of making this too much more of hearkening more back to more of MMPR as possible, because there was nothing really theory like about this Ranger team as opposed to something like an animal based season Jungle Fury. Because at least with Jungle Fury, we can get behind with that because you had rangers that had like these animal spirits and it's about the Order of the Claw, the Pai Shua fighting Dai Shi. And at least with Jungle Fury, we actually actually felt some actual animalistic fury with Jungle Fury. But Dino Fury, I, I didn't feel no fury with this team. Like... And it just made the title feel like you can tell that once again, we're in a point where Power Rangers is running out of title names when you're going for something like dinosaurs or ninjas again. And and with Cosmic Fury on the horizon, like Cosmic and Fury, what's going to be so fear, ferocious with Cosmic Fury when we get to that in the next couple of months? Like, what's going to be so ferocious about Cos Cosmic Fury? Even though, yeah, they're doing Q Ranger with those you know, Voyager Zords, and they're all animals, like, animals that aren't dinosaur-themed, but as spaceship-like Zords with animals, with anim animalistic aesthetic to it. But it just doesn't make sense. I also need to talk about the morph sequence. Oh, my God. You know, once again, we're doing another, for, for more hearkening back to MMPR with these newer seasons, we're still doing the, it's morphin' time, but, like... But the way how Dino Fury... Okay, let's do a rundown how I have to compare Dino Fury with older seasons again. While Samurai may have dodged a bullet with saying Go Go Samurai uh, before... You know, you know, saying morph, it's morphin' time Go Go Samurai um, while pulling out the Samurizers. But starting with Megaforce, we started going back to the it's morphin' time stuff. Because, well, it made sense for Megaforce to go back and harken back more to MMPR with that imagery and the iconography of MMPR with whenever the time the Rangers morph, they say it's morphin' time and then they add a new phrase to it. Um, at least with Megaforce and its morphin' sequences like Go Go Megaforce or Super Mega Mode, we can get behind that when they pull out the Ranger, you know, the the uh, the, the Gose Morpher or Legendary Morpher to pull out the cards and keys and go from Go Go Megaforce and then Super Mega Mode with the Ranger keys. Dino Charge was they had the um, Dino Charge Morpher and also going to act as a blaster, take their um, Dino Charge, you know, take their Dino Charger battery into the Morpher and say, energize, unleash the power after saying it's Morphin' Time. Ninja Steel was, it's Morphin' Time, Ninja Spin with the Ninja Spin, with the Ninja Spin uh, Morpher, Ninja, what is it, Ninja Steel, Ninja Spin Morpher, whatever you call it, Ninja Power, Power Ninja Morpher, whatever that, that was in Ninja Steel. Beast Morphers was, it's Morphin' Time, uh, activate Beast Power. At least with Beast Morphers, I can get away with, with, with that Morph Call. But Dino Fury's Morph Call, when they say Morphin' Time, they take their sweet-ass time morphing. Unbelievable. How slow-paced this, this team's Morph Sequence is compared to, like, M Megaforce or Beast Morphers or Ninja Steel's Morph Sequences. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, they take a long-ass time. For, for this team of Rangers, it's, it's morphin' time. Activate. Link the morphin' grid. Or is it, no, Dino Fury Key, activate, link the morphin' grid. Like, wow. And, and every time they morph and take a long-ass time getting into those suits and stuff and unleashing their dino power, 
It takes a minute and 40 seconds for them to morph. That is too long. And that's another thing that I don't like about modern season, these modern seasons of Power Rangers. Morph sequences take up more majority of the time. Why won't you guys speed up the footage or trim down the sequence? I mean, even though, yeah, each every every episode of Power Rangers, we gotta show the Rangers morph all the time because kids love seeing that. And when you're an adult viewer like me, with these newer seasons, the morph sequences feel very slow. When I go back and watch an older season like In Space or Time Force or Wild Force, or Dino Thunder, the more sequence is at least 30 seconds. But here, these newer, that, that, like I also said about with the Neo Saban era, and even probably with Hasbro to a degree with their seasons, with the more sequences, why they have to be an hour and 20 minutes, I mean, not, not an hour, like a minute and 20 seconds, I mean, sorry. what I say, where did I get the hour from? Sorry. But, but again, I don't like the morph sequences for Dino, Dino Fury. It's very pretentious and also too slow, you know, to, to say the least, with the pacing. And they don't need to say um, Dino Fury Key activating all of that. I mean, maybe it will be qu quicker if they... Well, I did like that Dino Fury, when they don't feel like doing the full morph, they just say link the morphing grid faster. Uh, and just do an insta-morph. It's more easier. But doing that long-ass morph, it, it's just, man, that just kills the pacing of them getting ready to fight a Sporex beast or Mucus or Slyther or Boom Tower or any of those other villains and monsters for the season. It, it just it kills the mood and it kills the pacing for me. Another thing I didn't like about Dino Fury, speaking of pacing, is how... Some of the stories they've told was also slowly paced. While they did told story, while they were, you know, here's the thing when I also have a problem with, um, uh, I know some people are going to disagree with me on the pacing part, but like the story is not well paced to me. I can't get into what is it about, about with the, the, the stuff with Aeon and Zeno with the Rafcon and then the Sporex. And then Void, uh, Void Knight, you know, and stuff like that. I I feel like um, there's some moments that needs to be balanced out and have enough time for everyone else to, to have some breathing room. And I feel like Dino Fury is up there with Ninja Steel, even though I haven't watched Ninja Steel. But Dino Fury's up there with like Ninja Steel's level of narr narrative, uh, you know, you know, with pacing, and even the narrative feels little bit inconsistent like sometimes they'll focus on Zato and the Ravcons sometimes they'll focus on the other Rangers or what they do with on Earth at Buzz Blast or whatever and sometimes it's about like uh, the villains with the Sporex um, and Void Knight trying to collect the Sporex to revive his wife a lot like Mr. Freeze and Nor you know with his wife uh, Nora Freeze um, in a way Sometimes the pacing is spent more on the comic relief civilians of Jane and Jay Borg, and I'm not feeling it. So that's another thing I don't like about the series. The next thing I also don't like about Dino Fury, well, this is more of a you know me thing with uh, the, the the show itself with the fandom. Like, even when I wasn't watching Dino Fury when it was initially going on, you know, on Nickelodeon via broadcast Netflix with 10 episodes five months apart from each other. Is that I did ran into spoilers and the spoilers made me not want to watch the show for a while until this very point. Because, you know, I've said this before in a podcast video way back when Ninja Steel was going on. That, you know, in a world where we have the internet and, you know, everybody will, you know, look something up in their own pace and own time. I really feel like Dino Fury had the most overblown amount of spoilers than any of the Neo Saban seasons. At least with Beast Morphers, I wasn't spoiled by much. But Dino Fury, there was like way too many damn spoilers. Too much being put out for me to look at and run into. And like, well, yeah, I minded them. You know, I, the only spoiler I did mind was, yeah, it, yeah, it was time that we actually got a, a gay Power Ranger, out of, again, out of Izzy Garcia and all that. But the spoilers were like, oh, Lord Zed came back. Uh, what is he going to do for d during Dino Fury since Mighty Morphin is over? Like, what? 
you spoiled that Lord Zed came back in Dino Fury? Okay, now that then make me want to watch that. Oh, Amelia's a Rakonian like the Red and Gold Rangers. Oh, really? So Amelia's trying to be like Astronomer and Corone, huh? And realizing Amelia will never be Corone or Astronomer, so don't even bother. Are you serious? It was revealed until the very end of the series that she's a Rakonian. Give me a break. What's the big deal? Um, one other things that I found that was spoil that was that was spoiled to me before I even watched the show. Um, oh, they they adapted another Tokyo villain in the Power Ranger season. Even though I didn't watch Ninja Steel, but I, I mind them adapting the main lady boss villain from Tokyo for Void Queen. But you know, upon watching it, wa upon watching it, I, I may be impressed with the inclusion of that suit. But if the character seems to match the overall feel of the show or doesn't, what makes me care about Void Queen? I like the suit. The character just sucks. Oh, Void King and uh, Void King and Void Queen are the parents of the Pink Ranger. Oh, really? Like we haven't seen that kind of reveal before from other seasons where we had a Red Ranger whose mom is the White Ranger and whose father was a villain later called the Red Wolf Warrior. Give me a break. We've seen this be territory better on in Mystic Force. The first thing I'm going to say negative about Dino Fury is the theme song. You know, Dino Fury, like Beast Morphers, well, again, the reason why they had a shortened theme song because it was part of Nickelodeon's policy to make the theme songs shorter than a minute, which is dumb. Now, I did have this problem with Beast Morphers also because Beast Morphers' theme song was short as well, and I don't understand why on earth did they decide to um, shorten the theme song. And also, once again, it's another remix of Go Go Power Rangers. And again, Dino Fury still has those Neo Saban holdovers, um, like Beast Morphers as well. But Dino Fury, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the version of Go-Go they've done was like not, it was just basically like a very phoned in, auto-tuned uh, version of the theme song. And, and you know, I don't like auto-tune and dubstep or whatever the, the tone, the tonal the atonal feel of the theme song uh, for Dino Fury. I'm just not. I'm just not feeling that theme song. It was just too quick for me, and it never really gave me a sense of what the show was going to be about from the moment I watched it, starting with episode one. And also, unlike Beast Morphers and a few other seasons lately, this is the first season since RPM where Power Rangers don't start an episode with a cold opening. They go straight from the theme song. And then the episode just mainly starts from where it's where, where, where we're setting up, setting up shop each episode after the theme. And yeah, I'm just not really feeling the theme song. And then also, yeah, the theme, the, yeah, the, the lyrics of, you know, of the words evolution, revolution. I think that meant about, oh, this is going to be a very, very, uh, 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 yeah, but then Mighty Rangers rise, but when really, what's going to make the Dino Fury Rangers uh, revolutionary and stuff and, and whatnot? Like, what made him so revolutionary? So, there's that. I do not like the Dino Fury Zords, unfortunately, sadly. Since even though I haven't watched the Sentai, it's adapted from Rue Soldier. Um, here's the thing. You know, I'm not a big fan of the Dino Fury Zords all that much. Because the Zords are, how do I say this? Besides Zato's T-Rex champion Zord, I'm not a big fan of the others though, personally. And they just wasn't doing it for me. The Auxiliary Zords, unfortunately, wasn't my, 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 my likening either. I... I do not like the Dino Fury Megazord. I, I I know that this was probably the more symmetric Megazord, the most humanoid looking Megazord we've had in the show's history. But I'm just not a big fan of the look of the thing. And it, it feels like a more streamlined version of what the Dino Charge Megazord should have been, which I, I kind of do amend the Sentai of Rue Soldier doing compared, you know, with uh, compared to Kiryuger. And whereas Dino Fury wants to outdo Dino Charge for a more badass looking Dino themed Megazord. 
Personally, I like the Dino Charge Megazord a lot more, even though it grew on me later on, even though I didn't like that Megazord at first from via Sentai uh, for what it was back then. But then when they adapted it for Power Rangers, then it started growing on me, the auxiliary Dino Zords that they would have, like the Ankylozord and all of that for that season. And knowing the Pink Ranger has an, Ankylozord, has an Ankylozord, um as her main Zord instead of like a Triceratops like Shelby did. Um, which I understand. And then for the first time since Dino Thunder, we have a Blue Ranger who has a Triceratops. Since Dino Charges, Blue Ranger had a Stego. As for the Dino Fury Megazord cockpit, it felt too reminiscent to Ninja Steel's co uh, Megazord's cockpit. And I don't like that either. I just honestly felt... Uh, and also, the Megazord cockpit for the Dino Fury Rangers was a bit too boxed in. Yeah, you can fit all six Rangers in that cockpit, but it just feels boxed in like they're in a little sm like they're in a long box or something and I'm I just wasn't feeling it. And the control consoles when they're standing on the, the consoles of the respective Zords uh feel very small and and stuff like that and I don't know what to make of that either. And, man, there's, like, so much stuff I don't like from Dino Fury um, when I watched it. I'm trying to piece the, the negatives of the show. It'll come back to me probably in the comments section if anyone's going to talk about it. But, like, um, okay, now, when it comes to any of the characters... Um, I already discussed about why I don't like Mucus or any of the other villains, not Void Knight and Void Queen. Um, even though I, they, they were the negatives, but if, repeating that again, no, no. Now, when it comes to the other three Rangers that are my least, um, Ollie, the Blue Ranger, he was like the weakest of the bunch. And... I feel as though that Ollie feels very underdeveloped and feels like, well, yeah, he's part of the team, but he feels like one of the most underdeveloped characters for me to care about. I, I, I try, I mean, there were some episodes I liked him in, in this, these two seasons, but none, I don't think none of those characters actually did, did him any good for me personally compared to like with Ravi from Beast Morphers. And that's why I feel like Ollie was like the weakest link of the, of the group personally for me you know Zato was okay but he's not one of my favorite Red Rangers but Aeon oh my god I need to talk about Aeon man I need to talk about this guy um honestly while I do mind our first black dude in the gold ranger and six ranger slots respectively but oh man watching Aeon on screen man this dude was cringe this Negro, this Negro was cringe, man. He was absolute cringe, even from the from the moment he was introduced. And then as his time went on as the Gold Ranger, I just felt like, oh my God, this dude was annoying. Like, this is the most annoying Six Ranger ever. To the point I'd rather prefer Jim and Gemma. At least I can tolerate Jim and Gemma, but Aeon was just annoying, man. And also, this dude has this thing for junk food, mainly sweets, like cookies and donuts and cakes and stuff. Don't you realize eating all that sugar can give you diabetes? I don't wish that. I, you know, I would never wish that on anybody, but eating all that sweet stuff, man. Eat something healthier, like fruits and vegetables. Or green vegetables, more rather. And yeah, you know, Aeon... You know, in the few episodes I've seen him in as the Gold Ranger, like when it was like, t you know, both he and Zato's birthdays, he took something that Zato was going to use. Oh, the the Dino Chucks, and when he had that bike, and when he was given a bike for a birthday, he took Zato's Dino Chucks and destroyed the bike, uh, destroyed the, ch the the chunks when fooling around with him when he was told not to use it. 
And then early on in the beginning, and then think about earlier on when he first came on to the show, how like Zato was, you know, not a good leader and then turn around. Oh, like, like Aeon can do no better as a leader, man. Make up your goddamn fucking mind, man. And then like, uh, uh man, um, Yeah, there was a lot of stuff about this dude I didn't like as the Gold Ranger. I really did not like this. I did not like Aeon at all. Even though he may be, I, I do like the fact they cast a black dude in the Gold Ranger slot and the Six Ranger slot, but maybe the next season, the, whatever the next Sentai they'll adapt for Power Rangers, get it right, because Aeon just, for your first Six Ranger outing with, with the black dude in that cast role, like, y'all had to make him... Um, very stereotypical. I didn't like that. And well, at least with Zato, yeah, Zato when his in his earlier episodes when he makes some, you know, some quippy jokes, even though most of his jokes ain't all that either. Like Zato making a reference to Coolio with cool, cool Coolio and all of that. That just didn't cut it for me. But then in that one episode, that uh, what the heck did he? What the heck did Aeon said that didn't make sense to me when I watched it? I forgot. I don't even think I want to go back to that episode. But and then there was some other stuff he said. That, you know, the Aeon would say sometimes that's fucking stupid, and like, ugh. I'm sorry, man, but like, I hate to say it, folks, but even though Aeon was our first black dude as the Gold Ranger, but he is the worst. He is the worst six. Ra He's one of the worst Gold Rangers. I have ever seen since Antonio from Samurai. And as much as I can't stand Antonio from Samurai, but Aeon can do no fucking worse. Um, what's some other negatives? Uh, other negatives about Dino Fury? I mentioned the theme song, the Gold Ranger. Uh, oh, the, the humor in the show. Okay. Well, I, I was going to bash Jane and Jay Borg. But people will probably criticize me for saying women can't be funny. That's not true. Women can be funny. I've seen some women like Melissa McCarthy. I've seen, well, um, let's see. Actresses that I grew up with that were funny, that have been, that have done comedy um, on like Nickelodeon shows, Disney Channel, or even the adult stuff like Friends or Everybody Loves Raymond. Or How I Met Your Mother, or uh, King of Queens, or Two and a Half Men, or whatever. But I, I honestly, you know, Jane and Jay Borg, you know, they were okay. You know, they were okay female comic relief duo. Uh, not try to compare them to be like bulk and like the female bulk and skull of the season because since Dino Fury was trying so hard to be like uh, Mighty Morphin, uh, like, like I complained about Ninja Steel, but Dino Fury, Jane and Jay Borg were just okay. They were okay. Comic relief. At least I prefer them better than Ben and Betty from Beast Morphers. Cause if you go back to my final thoughts video on Beast Morphers, how much I said, I don't like Jane, uh, of uh, uh, Ben and Betty, Jane and Jay Borg, I can get around with some of the humor they did. Especially with Jay Borg being a robot girl, robot woman, and Jane is the one who created her, in a way, and I have her do because again, because you know, with Jane being, you know, the the dynamic about oh, robot woman can do this that a human woman can't, and ha ha for laughs and and, and stuff like that. But um, honestly, Jane and Jay Borg, parts of the, you know, parts of their comedy did work. And then sometimes it doesn't, you know, there were a few times that, you know, like even like when Jane is trying to do something, it fails. When Jay Borg does it, it succeeds, but, or some stuff like that. And that's how that works within uh, the show in its, in its extent. Because, you know, here's the thing. I think the reason why they decided to do our first ever female comic relief duo in Power Rangers is because it hasn't hasn't been done before and I amended Dino Fury for that to a degree but I guess probably the way how it's been utilized was just underhanded I'm not saying it was terrible it was just an underhanded way of doing it well I mean when I be my underhanded like you know for all the flight people give you know some comic you know com you know female centric comedies um you know like bridesmaids 
and some others. And especially anything with Melissa McCarthy in it or uh, whoever. And when I think about, you know, the, 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 the comedy with between two women, it can work if it's done right. I mean, I know that a lot of people have ripped on something like, you know, the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. I know that even for someone who is not a diehard Ghostbusters fan, I am aware of the 2007, 2016 Ghostbusters. It, the problem with that movie wasn't, again, the women. It was just a pointless remake of the original Ghostbusters, but with women. But women, the women are not the problem. It's just the jokes didn't land and also... Or even anything that, um, you know... Any other, you know, film or television show where f women are the leagues, like, like the leads, like two broke girls. Now, at least with two broke girls, I can get away with what Sam and, Car you know, what, I mean, what Max and Caroline go through on that show. I at least found two broke girls funny with two women in the lead roles of that show with Kat Dennings and Beth Bears as Max and Caroline, even though I miss two bro girls. That was a good show, even though m most people didn't like it because there were just too many damn penis jokes and other kinds of other, uh, outlandish humor that, f that people found cringe by the two women of the show. Even Jennifer Coolidge is a uh, character on that show, but at least two broke girls. Again, t the reason why I prefer two broke girls and it's comedy because I find women, if they're if it's just two girls, I mean two women trying to be funny and outlandish given the material they're given, it makes the show. But if you do more than two women, like the 2016 Ghostbusters or or any other lead female comedy thing with more than two women in the lead as the focus, and then it's just all over the place. I'm not saying it's terrible, it's just it's just how you're gonna focus on, on on the two characters that I think are funny even though like I guess I like Dino Fury for poking fun at Jane because she is kind of a egotistical screw up while J while Jay Borg well Jay Borg okay but, but the thing is um I wish that well aside from the comic antics of the two I kind of wish that they had done an episode where like okay if, if Jane made Jay Borg then why the hell did she even created her to outdo her in some ways because like oh eventually one day robots will take over humanity or something and then and like next thing you know Jay Borg will probably lead an army of like robot men and women to outrun humans but again we already had a power ranger season where robots took over and humanity was screwed and all humanity was dead i mean again we had that in rpm but for something like dino fury i mean but it wouldn't be for laughs it would be just be more for seriousness i should note that the reason why jane has jay borg and why she was included into the series if you go back to the beginning of the series with Di Oper uh, operation dino hinge i think that no destination dino hinge that when she was unveiled jane got jay borg from hartford industries hinting an operation overdrive reference huh so that's probably how andrew hartford created mac and if Mac, you know, if Mac was created by his father, Andrew Hartford, Jane created J Borg. But also, what does the J stand for aside from Borg? Like Jane Borg, Janet Borg, I mean Borg. But then again, we already have a, a, a robot woman named Janet on that TV show, The Good Place. Another favorite TV show of mine, by the way. And or maybe Jacqueline Borg or... Jennifer Borg or you know not to be confused with XJ9 Jenny from the Nickelodeon series my life as a teenage robot or anything or um, any other females name that starts with the letter J with Borg but like unless Jane just made a robot counterpart of herself or something I don't know but although like again, if you have these parallels of Operation Overdrive with Hartford, why do I have a feeling that I mean Jane probably got a ro you know the the type of robot circuitry that he used to make Mac in Overdrive to for J Borg, but at least J Borg didn't go full blown like what happens to Mac you know what happened to Mac back in Overdrive. I'm just saying like how on earth does she even get the parts? 
uh, to make a robot female to be, you know, th that would have the same emotions as a human, but, you know, have to treat her as human. But even though all, all together she's really more of a robot with all the circuitry and wiring going on with her systems and servos. Just think about it. I know it's up for laughs and humor and all of that, but even though as much as I minded that little Hartford reference, and I'm thinking, oh, Hartford as in Andrew Hartford from Operation Overdrive again. And once again, this is one of those this is one of the uh, few key things Dino Fury was pulling off as fan service for an older aging Ranger fan like me to try to get that no that reference. Younger fans that are watching the show would probably would not know that because I don't think there was any the any of those young enough to remember Operation Overdrive by the time the season came out in 2021. So there you have it with that. But then again, I, I still kind of, I do slightly do like J Jane, Jane and Jay Borg, but yeah, even some of their humor can uh, feel flat like Ben and Betty's in ways. But they're still very better than Victor and Monty, I do say, th say so though. Because even though I haven't watched Ninja Steel, but I heard about, you know, Victor and Monty not being good uh, comic relief. But uh, then again, that's what, uh, that's how it is. But I actually feel as though that, um, again, like, again, we can try to do comic relief female du uh, duo characters. We tried that before in Power Rangers, but back then it was seen as uncommon. We had that with Lothor's nieces and Ninja Storm. Now, upon rewatching Ninja Storm more and more, whenever I see Capri and Mara on screen bickering or arguing, and Lothor tells them to be quiet with your bickering and all of that, I mean, some of the antics and the ban bantering that those two did were pretty funny for, for 2003. But I guess when you look at Jane and Jay Borg in comparison, it feels at times flat, you know? And that's how I see it. Some of the jokes they do is funny, and some things is not funny. And I was also worried that when when I heard they were going to do a comic relief duo of the two, I was, you know, you know, our first female comic relief duo in Power Rangers for like the the, the supporting characters. I wasn't sure whether if Jane and Jay Borg were going to be any were going to be uh, any better or any worse. And uh, then let's say Ben and Betty or Victor and Monty. But upon my watch of the series, OK, you know, they were actually pretty good, you know, but some of the jokes they do are pretty cringe sometimes. Um, and some things just fell flat or it's just, you know, they try to be funny, but they just wasn't working out. And, um, again, I get what they were trying to do, but it just wasn't working out. But then when you have, uh, our other supporting characters, um, Solon. Well, the only reason I like Solon was that the, the, the actress who played Morgana from SPD, and the voice of Itasis from Mystic Force, one of the Terran Terrors, uh, voices Solon. Solon kind of served as a Alpha and Zordon of the season, more likely a, a dinosaur version, a female dinosaur uh, version of Alpha for the season. And I did like Solon to a degree. I don't think there's that much I, I could say about Solon. So, okay. Um, but again, there's not much I can say about her, though. Um, I'm trying to figure out some other, I'm trying to figure out some other things to like about, um, I mean, to dislike Dino Fury. There is like, okay, but back to the comedy, like when it came to some of the, the quips and jokes that the Rangers make, you know, I get, they also want to take jabs at today's generation, uh, you know, with generate, you know, today's generation with how, you know, young people, uh, today talk versus us older people but but again that's you know because dino fury is very more up to date than what we had with previous seasons so with dino fury it made sense for them to be more progressive to say uh than most power ranger seasons and honestly it worked some of the time and other times it's well, th that's why the season is really more of a mixed bag, mediocre, average, mixed bag season for me. And, I mean, I don't love Dino Fury. I don't hate it all the way to the extreme. It's just one of those average, mediocre, below average, below mediocre sort of season of Rangers to say. Because, personally, I just feel as though that Dino Fury was trying so hard um, to be better than those old seasons. 
But but th- that was the problem because like you know the one liners and the jokes that the Rangers have made during Dino Fury, some of it landed, and again some of it didn't. And like I said, when it came to our Gold Ranger, you know Aeon, he tries. To, I mean this dude trying to be funny when knowing this dude was just cringe. Like you know especially. Whatever stuff he says out the mouth, that's stupid. Yeah, I laugh at it out of cringe, but also try to get a good laugh at how because again the again them just playing him off on a st- as a stereotype of how oh like all black people are funny, ha ha. Look, we've had a fair share of black people in Power Rangers that were funny, like male black African American male Rangers like Damon and Joel, and same go for other African American Rangers that were funny like Max from Wild Force, the Blue Ranger. Or um, Ethan, you know, even I love Ethan, my dude, Ethan James, the blue Dino Ranger, (laughs) you know, the tech geek. And then even like um, some other dumb, even whatever stupid, dumb stuff, Jack is the Red Ranger and SPD would say. Um, But when it comes to Aeon's humor, it, it, it just didn't land with me personally. And I just, I, it didn't land with me, but I just like laughing at how, how, how much of a fail his his humor can be to me um and and how again to me you know he, he kind of comes off as a stereotype i know everybody's going vehemently going to disagree with me on that but it just comes off very stereotypical though and i did amend you know i kind of amended them on the okay boomer joke in one episode because again that again keeping up with the times because again how young people today like to jab at uh, uh, older folks like the boomers and the Gen Xers out there. And like any boomers and Gen Xers watching these Ranger, you know, of course, older people don't give a shit about Power Rangers, <laughs> like to be honest. But like us millennials, since I'm a millennial who was born between the 80s and 90s gen, uh, old school though. But um, okay, I got that reference because I've seen. The fact that they were also are playing on how young people use social media nowadays in the season as opposed to in like Ninja Steel uh, or Beast Morphers. So I see what they were doing with that there. But honestly, that that kind of humor didn't land with me either sometimes. I mean, some of it did and some of it did not. So I'm mixed on the comedy and Dino Fury. Um, and when it came to some of the... But also the humor from the villains with like Mucus... Again, Mucus wasn't funny either as a villain, you know, female villain, even though she was just the butt of jo- That's why she's seen as the butt of jokes for the villains, in my opinion. So you got that going. But I really did not like Dino Fury for a lot of things because, like, I guess also... Oh, yeah, let's talk about the uh, Morphin Masters. Um, another thing I did not like about Dino Fury was how they were tying... Try, or trying too hard to tie past lore of power rangers with this season because as it was intended to make this like it was the last season ever and like the way how they tied lore to all the past seasons and including the morphin masters here's another thing the morphin masters especially master green the green morphin master as we learned she was responsible for a lot of things and we finally got explanations as to why Legendary Battle turned out the way it was and why um, um, Steel turned into human and stuff at the end of Beast Morphers' final episode and several other things the Green Morphin Master was uh, responsible for doing and changing. You know, the Morphin Masters were kind of like, you know, you know, gatekeepers of everything Power Rangers, you know, time and space, if you will in a way and they were kind of responsible for the creation of such powers and stuff the energems from dino charge and uh the ghost you know probably some other stuff from other seasons for example but the green morphin master she was pretty much responsible for a lot of outcomes over the course of the series and if not the entire franchise and i never really understood why on earth they decided let's make her the reason why oh this is why tommy brought all of those rep past rangers back in legendary battle or why did steel turn into a human after the rangers defeated vengex slash evox at the end of beast morphers and several other factors um why uh or or like well let's say she's responsible for some other things that uh she 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 did over the you know behind the scenes over the course of the franchise and several seasons 
Like she was probably the reason like Operation Overdrive, like during Once a Ranger when uh uh during the final episode, she probably told the Sentinel Knight uh to reform Mac from being uh, a human to an android and then back to being fully human after the final battle with Flurious ended. Or she was probably responsible for uh, the the re restoration of the Morphin Grid during Once a Ranger. Let's say she was responsible for that, but it was never explained in the show. Or she was responsible for, uh, like in Lost Galaxy, she was responsible for Kendrick's coming back to meet up with the Galaxy Rangers uh, once they made it to uh, Miranoid to revive not only Maya's people, but also reviving her once Corone put... Uh, you know, the pink quasar saber back into the stone and, and maybe the pink quasar saber found his way to bring Kendrick's back to life courtesy of basically the green Morphin masters doing or some other factor. Um, once countdown to destruction happened after, Z after Andro shattered Zordon's tube, Zordon Z wave, she pretty much course corrected it. His Z wave to turn some of the following villains like Rita, Lord Zed and Diva Tox human and also have Andro probably uh, secretly in Andros's ear to have Andros get his sister Corone back from from her astronomer getup and persona. No, nah, no, nah, that's no way. No, nah. Andros did, just wanted his sister back because he wanted it all to end. Or maybe the Green Morphin Master was the reason. Um, and even probably the Morphin Masters were probably responsible for several other things. Key. Uh, paraphernalia we had over the course of the franchise besides the Endergems, they were probably responsible for the creation of many things that were the source of many power rangers uh teams uh sources of power the quasar sabers for the galaxy rangers the zeo crystal the the lights of orion probably um the the animal crystals for the uh the wild force rangers the tie with the wild zords um even she was probably responsible for and also speaking of the morphin master the green morphin master Again, she was probably responsible for, uh, during Wild Force's final episode, the end of the Power Rangers. After Master Org initially killed the Wild Zords and destroyed the Rangers' powers initially, and when the Rangers were at their grimmest moment, when they could not defeat Master Org without their powers or Zords, she was the one that opened up the sky to brighten up and stuff and stop the doom and gloom rain, and she was the one that brought back all of the Wild Zords, including the Wild Zords, that the Wild Force Rangers could not find like a Rat Zord or Peacock Zord. Uh, and she brought dumb powers and Zords back for the Wild Force Rangers. Or also in Wild Force, she was probably the, the one responsible for telling Animus that he was wrong for still, you know, having taken the Rangers Wild Zords away just because he thought, oh, humanity sucks because humanity was is so wrong for endangering human you know, I mean, animal life and like, you know, wildlife and all of that. And, 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 oh, like how humans cannot uh, protect the earth very well from endangering animals or whatever that crap from Animus's arc. Um, maybe the green Morphin master convinced Animus aside from what Merrick was convincing to him to tell, you know, and when an after afterwards, after Merrick left, Maybe the Green Morphin Master found her way, found her way to meet up with Animus to tell him to give the Rangers their Wild Zords back and reawaken Princess Shayla. Maybe she was responsible for that. Um, there were some other things she may be responsible for. She was probably responsible for uh, like a whole lot of other things I can bring up from other seasons. She was probably responsible for um, a bunch of other things. I'm trying to figure out. Like in Mystic Force, like she was responsible for having Liam Bo return return to the Rangers and Udana after he initially the somewhat quote unquote defeated the the Master or whatever, and but then the Master came back, or maybe the Green Morphin Master found a way to uh, give the Rangers back their their magic and power back at, during their final battle with the Master during Mystic Fate, and also bring back uh, you know and have the Snow Prince and everybody come back, well, save for the Mystic Mother. And maybe she found a way to convince the Mystic Mother to find a way to bring her back to the void of all that is of good magic. Rita, you know, Rita, formerly Rita turned the Mystic Mother. Maybe she found a way to do that. Um, even though the Green Morphin, even though the Green Morphin Master, she probably told the Tribunal, you know, when the Rangers were at their darkest of times in Dark Wish, when, uh, when Imperius had Genji and when the range after the Rangers abused Genji, you know, was being over reliant of the magic and when they abused him, 
And then, like, when the Rangers went to meet the with, with the Tribunal of Magic, she probably convinced the Tribunal to give them their powers back. Maybe that's probably, sh that was her doing, and not the Tribunal's doing. Even though the Tribunal of Magic were dickheads anyway. Especially the black one. So I'm like, man, maybe the green Morphin Master was responsible for a lot of things, whereas the other Morphin Masters, they're just there in the background. It's all about the green Morphin Master. Maybe she was also responsible for Tommy's restoration of, the, of his green ranger powers too. Multiple times. Probably. But I think that's another thing. I get they were also tying a lot of loose ends from all those seasons because... It's like Hasbro, when they did Beast Morphers and Dino Fury, it feels like they just got Power Rangers just to find a way to end this book of continuity we've been following since Day of the Dumpster and whatever the final episode of Cosmic Fury will be called. And we're like, after 30 years, this is the end of that this long-running incarnation of Power Rangers or some stuff like that. We'll see when we get Cosmic Fury later on, but I'm not really that excited for it, personally. But yeah, the Morphin Masters, they were originally conceived back in that one filler episode of Mighty Morphin Season 1, where they didn't delve more onto the Morphin Masters later on after that. You know, that was the common thing with MMPR. They would bring up some things, and then sometimes they forget about it because, I don't know, plot holes, continuity, budget, Sentai footage, or whatever. But, well, that's the problem with uh, MMPR back, back in the day. <sighs> well, I'm trying to think of more negatives about Dino Fury. It'll come back to me probably later on, even or maybe when I do a rewatch. Later. So, in final thoughts, Power Rangers Dino Fury was meh, mediocre, average season. It's no better than Beast Morphers, though, and it, it was trying, or even is trying to be better than any other season that has come before it. Oh, yeah, I'll discuss Lord Zed and his return later on, but I wanted to talk about him, but I just don't want to talk about him now. That will, I'll save that as a, for a video in itself, probably going into next month, going into the new year. And on the 30th anniversary of the franchise about Lord Zed. And I, I think that would explain with that cliffhanger ending. Um, you know, they killed off Zato, but then all of a sudden they bring him back as a white ranger. And I was also disappointed in that final episode of Dino Fury that in that epilogue ending, cliffhanger epilogue, whatever, whatever type of ending it was. They killed off Zato, the red ranger, only for him to come back as a white ranger with a red ranger helmet and with a red version of the dino fury team insignia because again hinting that they're going to adapt q ranger because that's an element that was also from q ranger where you know if you saw lucky go from red to white there you go but i just felt like personally they just uh yeah personally overall dino fury is not my favorite season of power rangers it's just one of those Seasons that I just find one of the most overblown and overhyped seasons, even though it was it didn't have the hype it had back when it was first trademarked from Rue Soldier two years ago. And when given the rumors with the Illuminati and stuff about the whole Hasbro and Toei split and all of that, it just made me care less inclined about the future Power Rangers at this point. And things were looking pretty bleak. So therefore, Dino Fury was not a great season at all i know a lot of you are going to vehemently disagree and say how dare you say that anthony dino fury was awesome it is way better than your stupid lost galaxy or time force or spd or lightspeed rescue and all them but but look i know i was comparing dino fury in this video a little bit but like realizing dino fury wasn't really all that great personally personally i feel as though it makes me want to appreciate something like rpm where it's the, the Phantom over blew that out of proportion, but then all of a sudden, look where RPM is currently. RPM is still a, a very critically lauded, well received Ranger season, and I'd rather take something like RPM over Dino Fury. But Dino Fury feels, yeah, overblown. I mean, it's no worse than like back over 20 years ago. I remember how when, when Time Force came out, Time Force was overblown too, but. The, the older I got, I started to appreciate Time Force and why it was so great. But to me, my all-time favorite season will still be Lost Galaxy because of the things it did. But everybody was like, man, you're too old. I mean, you're old. You're still on that Lost Galaxy stuff? But again, save that in the comment section when I tell somebody off if someone tells me that. But anyway... 
but yeah, but Dino Fury, it, it was trying to do everything in its power to do what a lot of pow past Power Ranger seasons couldn't, you know, and, and I can see why Dino Fury ended up being a very well-received season. I know a lot of fans love this season, but I'm in the minority that does not like Dino Fury. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead. Laugh. Laugh at me all you want. Cuss me out in the comments and say how I say, oh, Dino Fury sucks. And I should never said that Dino Fury is terrible. But of all the times I had this one guy in the fandom said that, you know, I had nine years to do a fan film of PRLG and I still have done nothing. That same guy. Or like personally, I, I, I just feel like. Dino Fury just feels like a really overblown season. That's why I didn't care for it. That's why the toys wasn't selling. I mean, no one gave a shit about Dino Fury besides the fans. So therefore, Dino Fury was just a below average to mediocre uh, season. But there's still a good few, like I said earlier, there were a few good things about it. But everything about Dino Fury was just not great. So when we get to the 30th anniversary coming up and with Cosmic Fury on the horizon Dino Fury continues with the 30th anniversary season and the season that will likely be the end of Power Rangers Power Rangers Cosmic Fury so I would like to thank you thank you all for what listening to what I had to say even if you didn't like what I had to say about Dino Fury but um there you go so anyway be sure to subscribe and hit the note hit the bell and the notification uh, whenever I upload a new video, subscribe, drop a like, share this video with your friends and whatnot. And I'll see you guys with a new podcast video in 2023 or so. Or if I do have time this year to do a new one. So anyway, guys, thank you. But I just feel like, I'm sorry, but Dino Fury is just overblown. It was an overblown season.